Um, let me talk a little bit about the importance of insurers, which I talked to you a bit about before. I'm just going to go through the summary of an, of an article I wrote, which itself is a summary of a longer piece of work. Back in 2005, I called it um, Acknowledging the Elephant in the Living Room. I remember some, some colleagues saying at that time, um, what does that mean? Um, the phrase the elephant in the living room was a bit less common perhaps than it is nowadays. I was trying to say insurance was the thing which wasn't spoken about. It was rarely discussed by judges and certainly not by academics at that time. And yet it's crucial in practice. A tier points to how important it is. Insure, without insurance, the law of tort would not exist effectively. The, I've gone through some of these fact, facts with you before. The real defendants in the vast majority of cases, in 9 out of 10 cases, are insurers. Um, uh, we never have uh, individuals who are not insured. Uh, we've got other defendants, like large insure, self-insured corporations, very big corporations, may not carry insurance. They may choose to defend the cases from within their own financial uh, wherewithal. Uh, um, local and national government by the actions against the NHS or the Ministry of Defence, yes, they, they comprise the other one-tenth of claims, as it were. It's extremely rare for an, an insured individual to ever be heard of in the tort system. It's very much about insurance, a subject never discussed until recently by judges, never mentioned in, in courts. In fact, there used to be rules that you couldn't actually raise that when we used to have juries uh, back in the 1930s, you weren't allowed to say that the defendant was insured. It was that prohibitive. Um, and the number of insurers actually involved in the system is very few. There, uh, there are, I told you last time, in motor insurance, there are four big companies. But overall, outside of motor insurance, we've got eight overall companies to cover employers' liability, to cover the whole area. There are about eight big ones. Uh, and in motor insurance, the fact I gave you last time, there are four companies which collect over half the premiums. So our 860,000 claimants are met in practice by just a handful of insurance companies. There may be several hundred insurance companies in the country, but in practice, eight of them are only cover the law of tort. They, they pay the compensation. They pay 94% of, of the damages in tort. Um, they, they process the claims. And they do it in a routine manner with all these 860,000 claims. What do you expect? There's got to be an element of routinization, which is going to be a theme for the lecture for this week and next week. Uh, um, they choose to contest only a minority of those. Uh, very few claims are actually contested, in fact. They pay the litigation costs of both sides. They fund the tort system. Um, they control much of the representation, as I said to you last time. Not only defendants uh, are being covered by insurers, but claimants also have protection from insurance in as much as the insurer will provide them with legal expenses insurance. So they'll direct a claimant to a particular firm of solicitors who's on the insurance panel to act for that particular insurer, they, the claimant having taken out before the event insurance, BTE insurance, as an add-on to his liability insurance policy, the claimant uh, may well opt to accept this. And I said to you last time, for obvious reasons, I never do. Uh, um, um, but if, if I were to, I would then have cover for legal expenses and I would have been directed to a claimant lawyer firm had I then had an accident. Uh, um, uh, so they control the litigation. They not only act for defendants, but they also act for many claimants. And insurers control how that litigation works. The policyholder drops out. The real defendant drops out of an action. The policyholder cedes control to insurers to run their case. Insurers actually, I said to you, they don't contest liability all that often. Uh, only 20% of cases were contested in a study done by Richard Moorhead at this university some years ago. They fault, although we, 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 we big it up in the first semester, fault is not the essence of the tort system. 
very few cases, a minority of cases, are actually contested in any shape or form, let alone get to court. Insurers make admissions, they settle cases, they don't need the consent of the insured. No matter how much you're upset by, 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 by the insurer paying up when you think they shouldn't be paying up, you weren't at fault. It wasn't your, your wrongdoing, but the insurer agrees to pay. You can do nothing about that. The insurer takes over the case, and he, the, the insurer decides whether or not the claim will be settled. This is true even in a clinical negligence case, even where doctors, for example, could be quite upset by a, a, a clinical negligence claim against them. It's not just in terms of the money, it's in terms of their reputation. And they might sort of strongly oppose the uh, suggestion that they've been any way at fault. If the medical insurer decides to pay, the medical insurer will pay. Um, to show how anonymous defendants are in the tort system, Harry Street was a practitioner who got, became chair uh, 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 in law at uh, Manchester University. And as an ex-practitioner, he did write a penguin book called Road Accidents back in the 1960s. Um, and this was unlike any taught text. This was telling you actually what, what, what was going on in uh, uh, litigation and in criminal actions with regard to uh, road traffic. Um, and he tells the story that he, was, he himself was involved in an accident uh, and he handed the matter over to his insurance company. He said, I never heard any more about it. You know, it was dealt with by the insurers. And then one day I woke up and unexpectedly found myself in the Court of Appeal. He, there was a report of a case in the Court of Appeal, and it was his case, and he was the defendant. It was Street as being the defendant. Um, um, and uh, he said he knew none of it, because it was all taken over by the insurance company. It was appealed on a basis uh, of technicality, and he found himself suddenly in the Court of Appeal. No one told him. They didn't need him for this appeal. Uh, the case ran automatically by the insurers. He suddenly woke up to find himself in the Court of Appeal. He was dropping out, he dropped out of the litigation. He'd not been involved in it. Defendants, by and large, play very little part in, 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 in tort claims. Uh, it's the insurers. The insurers control uh, the bureaucracy of the claims handling procedure is very much insurance driven. They make extensive use of things like information technology. They can monitor how efficient their claims handlers are how many files they have open, how good are the external lawyers uh, in dealing uh, with, with claims they give them, um, how cheaply do they settle cases for, what are their costs ratio. There's a computer system, uh, various computer systems, but one which isn't talked about at all in taught books, which is really quite important. It's a system called Colossus, uh, um, named after other famous computer systems, um, um, but this uh, controls how insurance agents negotiate. The, the, the Colossus will value a claim when it first comes in. The, the Colossus you can, you, you, you will tell you how much the claim is worth. And you must, if you're an insurance claims negotiator, you've got to work that into your settlement, which eventually materialises. So you know, and that, and that, there's very little discussion of this. There's no discussion in taught textbooks. There's very little discussion elsewhere of the importance of computerized uh, uh, um, AI procedures which affect uh, how the settlement claim. Bureaucratization by insurance. Uh, insurance claims are also affected by uh, uh, the, the individual value of the claims assessor, how, how, how liberal, how, how conservative he is. Uh, um, the claims handler has a certain discretion and uh, uh, it's found with well, various views on how that discretion is exercised. Uh, certainly in the States, it tends to attract people into the job who have a very sort of conservative mentality. Uh, and one particular study showed that the individual who was dealing with the settlement tended to be on the conservative uh, side when it came to settlements. Uh, um, and and the, the final conclusion... I wrote in this, this, art, this shortened article um, was to point to the importance of insurers not only in settling claims but the, the importance of insurers 
as being very effective in lobbying to affect talk reform and the changes that are, ma that are made, you can be sure that no matter what talk reform is on the, bo is on the, the, the books as being possible, there will be definitely strong representations from insurers and insurers' representatives um, who in the historic past have been very significant, especially in the House of Lords, but even in the House of Commons, there have been uh, substantial Lloyd's interests, uh, insurance interests being represented by uh, factions of MPs. I've traced that in the past as to how the bias towards insurance exists in the manufacturing of legislation. So the overall conclusion to this article, elephant in the living room, was that insurance was indeed fundamental to the operation of the tort system, in spite of the tort books, leaving you in ignorance. Um, uh, insurance technology underlies the whole practice of tort law, says uh, one commentator. Uh, the, the quote I really like is from, from John Fleming, who many years ago, uh, in writing his, his, his shortened textbook, on the law of torts, said, tort would have collapsed long ago under the weight of demands put upon it, and it would have been replaced by an alternative and perhaps a more efficient system of accident compensation if that wasn't for insurance. If it wasn't for insurance, we wouldn't have our present tort system. It would have had to have collapsed. Individuals could not have paid the damages. It would be a completely different system without insurance. So the importance of insurance then very much affecting the law of tort. 